You know, we sent man to the moon in the 1960s and brought them back safely, yet in 2013, we can't get China to make two electric fans that work. Well, hello everyone out there. I might say naughty word in this video. You know, yesterday I bought two fans. I was replacing some fans that I had in my workshop. I use fans sometimes in my videos, and I like fans that move on multi axes My other fans didn't do that. It's just here, my old fan. Doesn't nothing wrong with that. I just wanted something a little bit, a little bit more fancy. But I found that there's some problems going on here. I'm just turning this one on. Come on. Ah, oh, finally. Making a strange sound as well. Turning it on again. Oh, I mean, what rubbish is that? Okay, let's go look at the other one. Turning it on. It should show you me turning the switch. It is plugged in. And all this one does is it makes a hum. I'll put the microphone of the camera to the back. Hope you can hear that over the cicada sound outside. Oh, it's starting to smell that one. Welcome to the world of some really cheap and nasty consumer goods. Well, there's the receipt. Fans, I bought two of them. They were basically $20 each. I bought a little CD micro system as well. I do buy a few things from Aldi. What I'm finding in Aldi is you've got to be really careful for electronics goods purchases. I'm finding it very hit and miss. I'm not a, against Aldi. I'm a huge fan of theirs. I buy a lot of stuff there. If you know my toy reviews, you constantly see their batteries being put into toys all the time. Like I said, I'm not against Aldi here, but tell you what, when I came across these two, this is really pushing the friendship. I might just run through a few of the other things that I've purchased at Aldi to show you that I am a big buyer there. I bought these LED lights. I use these a lot in my videos. I actually got six of them all up. There's some in the house. Hey, they're fine. Yeah, they've got rechargeable batteries. But out of the six, one of them failed. And where it failed, it was the switch there. The switch there has basically collapsed. So, yeah, it can't turn on and off. Um, but I'm thinking, well, maybe I'll just use that as spare parts. Because I did have trouble with the big long ones that I bought. Use those in that Rat CSI video. And what I was finding was the LED arrays were failing on the big long ones. I bought these little rechargeable walkie-talkies. Hey, lots of fun. They work great. The kids love them. Not a problem. I purchased this action video camera. Here it is here. It was only cheap. And I just, you know, I'm one of these people, if I see something cheap, the curiosity gets the better of me. But the video resolution from that is horrible. You know, it says HD video resolution, but what you've got to really be careful of is there's a ton of smoke and mirrors when people talk about video resolution. What you've got to look at is the compression. And the image from that thing there is nothing like what you get from a very expensive and quality GoPro camera. But hey, curiosity killed the cat. Oh, the Aldi smoke machine is something that I've had a fair bit of use of and I can speak a fair bit about this is the first one I purchased 2010 last year it clogged up and I had to fix it I had to basically get the gunk out from the very very fine plumbing that's inside it and also the pump was showing signs of not working this machine now doesn't work I've just powered it up I can't get any life out of this There's little tiny wisps of smoke out the front there can you see that yes you can just see there's little wisps of smoke that's all it does. So I'm thinking, well, you know, I use that a lot, that machine. I've got to be fair to Aldi here. I put different smoke fluid in, into it as well. I gave it a flogging. So I think it's had fair use. This one here I purchased in 2011. Uh, it still works. But to me, oh, it just doesn't seem to be as vibrant as when I first purchased it. I think this is dying of the same fate as that one there. And I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. Uh, what I'll do is, actually I'll send that one there down to Aussie 50, my friend down in Melbourne. I'll let him do an autopsy on that, and I'm pretty sure he'll find the pump's gone. But he'll also find the plumbing is blocked as well, because I know that was a problem. And I also purchased another one here, because I knew that one was dying. I thought I'll buy another one, and that was one I purchased in 2012, which was last year. So maybe the saying here is, buy cheap, buy twice, buy thrice. So hey, that's the Aldi Smart Machine. Sure, it's made for a budget. Sure, you know, it's only going to last you X amount of years. But you know what, I do have a real smart machine, a really good one, one that I purchased 15 years ago. Yes, 15 years ago, the Gem Fogger Mark III. This is an excellent machine, and guess what? Press the fog button here, it still works. This thing has never failed me, and it'll pump out heaps and heaps of smoke. It'll just keep pumping it. So, 
maybe it's a bit of a lesson in buying cheap versus buying something which is quality. And I think from memory, that machine there cost me about $1,200. You know, it's funny, I look at my old Gem 5 and it's all rusted because the smoke fluid is fairly corrosive. And the worst thing I've done to this is I haven't used it. And that's sometimes the thing that'll kill a machine. That thing is still running. It's quite amazing. It just sits in, the, in my garage and rarely ever comes out. And you're probably thinking, well, why did you buy this, the Aldi machines if you've got that lovely Gem machine? Well, I'm one of these people. I'm very curious about something that's cheap. And I think when I saw smoke machines that were coming onto the market, like they started off you know, $80-ish, and I saw them drop to about $50. I think, well, I'm going to go pick it up because it's my curiosity about this really, really inexpensive consumer goods that will always haul me in. And I think there's a lot of people like me. And the other very important thing to note here is when I purchased this machine, and it was expensive, you could buy little tiny compact gem machines, which were like that, but you're paying thousands and thousands of dollars for them, but they would have lasted a long time. I can guarantee to you that thing there will not last near as long as that machine there. Ah, oh, those cheap tablets that you see at Aldi. Yes, I've got one of these. And yes, I've got an iPad inside, but I use this one to control my GoPro camera. I used it on my McDonald's challenge where I ate McDonald's food for a whole month and I got very used to this, this machine. I actually like the operating system on this. And in Aldi, you see a lot of people buy these. And I go up to them and say, hey, why do you buy this? And they say, well, what we do is we buy these for the children because they're inexpensive, load Angry Birds on and all the games that you like. And um, the, the, the parents end up playing with the iPad because they don't want the iPad trashed by the kids. But I can't fault this little machine. It's very good. And it's actually got some features that iPads don't have. Oh, we like coffee. And sure, I bought one of the expressing machines from Aldi. This is one of the earlier ones. For us, there hasn't been any problems with this machine. It gets used every day. You put your little coffee pot in there. And it makes funny sounds. And out comes your nice coffee there. Uh, also bought one of the milk throffers. Um, this has got a problem. Every now and then you've got to go in and you basically got to give it a twirl to get the little spinner working. Um, but we sort of live with that. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It's very hit and miss. Coffee throffer, so-so. That machine there, well, for us it was excellent. Oh, we all love making cakes, don't we? I purchased this cake mixer at Aldi about a year ago. It's in very much the style of the old classic Sunbeam Mixmaster, which had the knob on the back here and curves like that. And it's funny, I really need to pick this up because it was so cheap. And my wife said, oh, you know, we need a cake mixer in the house, even though we already had one. She wanted something which looked a little bit more modern. And let me show you the one we already had. Hello. This is my mum's cake mixer. My mum passed this on to us. Um, it's a Sunbeam Mixmaster. The last patent information underneath is 1953. I know it's been, it's made every one of my birthday cakes. Um, it's, it predates me. Let's call it something which is 50 years old. This thing is a classic, and guess what? It still works. Hello? What's this teaching us about consumer goods? I think this this item here alone, you know, there's a video all about this item and about where we're traveling. Let me just turn it off because it's a little bit noisy. But it used to have three bowls. It's only got two. There used to be a middle-sized bowl. I think I was the one who smashed it when I was much younger. But, um, you know, this is the false economy of what's going on. Here's something that was, you know, I don't know the exact date. We call it a 1950s cake mixer. It has lasted how many years? So many. Versus this one here. Will this one last 50 years? I can absolutely guarantee to you it won't. So we're living in this world where we're getting pumped with this sort of stuff here. And back in the good old days, there was this stuff being made and it just lasts. And people say we live in a much smarter and better world today. Well, I'll tell you what, I could argue that. For me, this control knob on the back here says much about the era that it comes from. If I turn this around slowly, I'd like you just to read the options here in the power settings. It's very different to what you'd see on a, a cake mixture of today. And there's one word here which had me very curious, and it's not an Australian word. And here it is here, beating uncooked icings and candy. The word candy is not used in Australia. That's an American term. So it sort of has me thinking, well, who was behind the design of this machine? Maybe made in Australia, but not necessarily designed here. Maybe someone can tell me. My fondest memory of this machine is what I'm about to do now. Let me just release the beaters. And my mum would mix a cake and then she'd say, Leo, would you like to lick the beaters? Did your mum do that? Well, I remember licking beaters. My tongue has been on these beaters so many times over the years. It's not funny. And just very quickly, here's the info underneath this machine. And I can see these patent years, 1935, 1941, 1942. And the model number is A-9B-B. 
I dare say there are collectors out there who would get very excited when they see this very old Sunbeam Mixmaster. You know, down at my mum's house, I could probably show you quite a few things that have lasted 30, 40, 50 years. And you've got to say to yourself, well, that's fairly environmentally friendly because here's an item which can get passed along and be, you know, basically multi-generational. I don't think this is the sort of item here which is going to last 50 years. And I'm not having a go at Aldi here. I'm just having a go at the crazy consumerism that we're caught up on these days. At my age, and I'm in my mid-40s, I've been exposed to very good consumer goods and very ugly consumer goods. And you've got to think of it like this. A company which is producing something like this, which is inexpensive and mass-produced, is going to sell one of these items back to you every, I don't know, maybe four, six, eight years. Ten if you're lucky. It all depends on the usage, doesn't it? Versus a company like this, which was making this, well, it's made one sale to my mum back there, let's say, 50 years ago. Did she have to buy another one again? No. So what value do you put on an item like that? I'd actually say this, something like this is actually priceless in my books. But we're in a very different world today and items like that are few and far between. Maybe you've got one of these Aldi cake mixers. Maybe you can leave a comment and tell me if yours is still going okay or whether it's gone food. I'd love to know. So here's something. I don't know how long this is going to last. There's some fans that basically didn't work out of the box. Here's a machine that lasts for 50 years. It's quite an astonishing contrast. There's a saying in life, the things you touch every day, you buy the good stuff. This is the toilet paper that's used in our house. It's the Aldi toilet paper. It's the more expensive version, the three-ply one. And I think that's what Aldi is very good for. And there's something I purchased. It wasn't from Aldi, but it's almost a year old. And I think it's a great lesson to me about buying something which is very, very good, yet very expensive. But I think this is going to give me far more joy than buying some cheap and nasty thing that only lasts a few years. And that machine is a Dyson DC35 multi-floor stick vacuum as I call it. It's got a stick there and a nice twirly head. I only purchased that because I was so impressed with the much larger Dyson DC39 that I purchased to suck up spiders. And this came into the house and it has blown the whole family away really. Um, like I said, I'm going to do a, basically a year old review of this. And I'll show you what I like about this vacuum cleaner and what I don't like. And you know what, when I purchased this vacuum cleaner, it was expensive, or expensive to me, because I was uh, addicted to buying cheap and nasty stuff. But I tell you what, it was well worth the money. And my wife agrees. My son uses this vacuum cleaner. He just loves playing with it, really. And I think there's a lesson here for me, and hopefully a lesson for you, that sometimes buying that cheap and nasty stuff is only doing you an injustice. I should also add, I'm within my rights to take this back to Aldi. I have my receipt. But I tell you what, I'm not a big fan of electrical goods that basically go food out of the box. And how unlucky am I to have a double whammy? You know, I've said before, am I the unluckiest consumer in the world? Sometimes I feel I am. If you're out there and you've had problems with, um, well, not necessarily always Aldi stuff, but just cheap Chinese electrical stuff, leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you've got to say. And I bet you I'm not the only person with these dodgy fans. Well, there is that saying, buy cheap, buy twice, but even buying twice didn't help me with those fans. <laughs> <laughs> oh well i hope you enjoyed this video a bit of a different one from me and as always thanks for watching and bye for now oh, i've edited the video up and i think i can squeeze a bit on the end a little bit more naughty stuff this is the fan before that was making the scraping sound it was spinning but now it doesn't uh, so i've just unplugged it and that scraping sound is actually a clue to why this other fan isn't spinning at all and i'll go in close here i'm not sure how good you'll see this but that blade there is actually interfering with the cowling. It's on the cowling there. I've got a piece of timber here just moving the fan around. I can move it, but the blade there is interfering. It's, you know, it's getting caught up. So if I turn it on, that's why it's not. I can hear it wants to turn, but there's no way it's going to fight past that plastic interference. So um, what that's telling me is that that fan there, both these fans were never tested in the factory someone has just put these together and basically whopped them in the box and the most basic thing you should do is test an item that's the you know you know rule number one make an electrical item test how simple is that i should show you the serial numbers here very important here's one serial number and let me change over to the other serial number oh yeah so maybe if you've got one of these fans check your serial number versus the one i've got Sorry about that extra bit, boys and girls, but maybe we're all a little bit wiser about these 
little fans.